Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about some Quixel tools that dropped out very recently. I know Unreal Engine 5 is all the rage right now, but these tools that Quixel made for us are actually pretty cool. And they come in the form of blueprints, which are right here. But before we get started, remember, you can support the channel by joining the Patreon. There's the Discord and the Twitter if you want to follow me there. But if not, just leaving a like and leaving a comment really goes a long way. It really helps other channel with the engagement. For this scene, uh, this is actually a very simple scene. This is a static mesh. This is not a landscape. And these are uh, some static meshes that came in with the pack. So one of the things about these tools is that they come in the marketplace. So these aren't things that you're going, you're not going to find them in bridge. You have to download them from the marketplace. They have a lava field collection, a quarry and a dead grass one. So if you go into the marketplace and I'm just going to type Quixel, you're going to see it's these two. So it's the dry grass collection, the quarry collection and the lava field collections. Uh, these, uh, aside from the blueprints, they also contain some merch assets that might be pretty useful to you or not. Uh, I recommend downloading them all because they're all for free and they are incredible. So let's look at the blueprints right now. So as you can see, what I have is just one static mesh. This is just one plane that is tessellated to oblivion, added a little bit of displacement and a blend material so I can get the nice puddle. But the variation that I'm getting here in some places, that's why it's not everywhere, is I'm getting it with the Quixel Random Scatter Blueprint. It's this one right here. So if I turn on the game view, you're going to see that I have a couple, bunch of uh, these little icons that look like suns all around. And what these do is uh, they're a blueprint where you add several meshes Actually, I have four right now, but you can add even more and you can just scatter them randomly instead of having to place them by hand. It's really useful. It saves a lot of time, especially when constructing uh, detailed environments like this one. So I'm going to show you how to work them. So let's just try on these uh, empty piece of land. I'm just going to bring one of these. And as you can see, it's just by itself. And we're going to look at some of the properties here. So number of meshes, very self-explanatory radius control. This is going to be your scattering, how scattered they are going to be a rotation control. Again, very self-explanatory. You have a minimum scale, a maximum scale. This is for the variations, a scale randomness again for the variations and location randomness. And another thing that you're going to have for the variations of your meshes. So uh, let's get to adding some meshes here. Now, the way you do that is you go here where it says meshes to spawn and you just click the plus button. So let's just add three. And I'm going to go into um, let's say I'm just going to look for the same ones that I already have. So SM underscore Volcanic, these are the ones that I already have here. You can add whatever asset you want to this. Just import from the mega scans, get it here. Any static mesh will do. Okay, so let's add some meshes. So I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to take this one as well. And uh, just this one right here. All right. So as you can see, as I was adding meshes, this was starting to populate. And right now it, it looks pretty small, but we can change that. So right now it says number of meshes. We only have one. We can actually set it all the way to 50. Fortunately, it doesn't go higher than 50. Uh, if somebody in the comments section finds how to do it over 50, please let me know. But so far, like I'm typing other numbers and it always defaults to 50, which is pretty rare. Uh, you got the radius control, which again controls the scattering. So I'm going to increase this. And bear with me because I have ray tracing on, so it may be a little bit slow. I'm just going to go with, let's do 300. Okay. So as you can see, it scatters the meshes all around. Uh, we also have rotation control. You can see if I type some numbers, it starts rotating like the teacups in Disney World. 
and we have minimum scale and maximum scale so if we change this to let's say two uh, always do it in all the axes you can see that uh, it's a little bit different than it was before so it changes how they look and you can just place them on top of your landscape or your static mesh and now you have all these assets scatter around for you randomly without having to place them by hand because sometimes it can be a bit of a pain and it also groups them for you because that's another thing that I usually did when dealing with pixel assets is I usually have to lay them over pretty close because uh, I want to use them modularly and then I'll have to group them so I can just like put them all around now you don't have to group them you can just use one of these blueprints and that's why this tool is really useful now there is another tool which is this one right here it's called Quixel spline scatter so what this does is it does the same as the one that I just showed you but it scatters the mesh along a spline so this one's really useful as well I'm actually going to go back and going to go into my blueprints let's put in a Quixel spline scatter as you can see it gives you a small spline you have your little sun right here to indicate where it starts and you have a spline that you can modify here if you hold alt you can create more points on your spline I'm just going to make it real big like this and then we're just going to add some meshes to it so over here um, kind of similar so we go into static meshes I'm gonna add, let's say um, yeah let's add four meshes for this one so let's go into geometry these are the merged ones that I talk about these are pretty cool meshes that Quixel uh, made for us and I'm just gonna throw some in there let's do something crazy these are huge and these are your regular size rocks with some trees so I'm gonna do this tree here you can see they already start showing up let's do this rock let's do uh, this one right here and uh, I don't know if this is too big yeah this one's huge but hey let, let's just leave it for the sake of testing so that's a huge rock but it's fun so we can start populating it and right down here we have the spacing so we can increase the spacing and I'm actually gonna switch that one because it's too big there you go so now we can see what's going on so let me reduce the spacing so you guys can see all the meshes around here so we got one two three four we got our four meshes and let's do you can do random rotation so let's say when I do 50 you can rotate them around random scale so if we do two you can see that some are bigger than others so I'm just going to leave this at one and we have additional transforms here that we can use for this but the good thing about the spline and the spline usually serves more as kind of like a set dressing when you are let's say trying to put some things along a border that's when I would use a spline that spline doesn't uh, work like on every single aspect so there you go let's just move this out and as you can see they are always following the path and depending on how you got your path they'll be placed and you can reduce or increase the spacing however you want if you want them a lot more a lot closer all right so there is that one and again you can substitute this with wherever meshes you want you can import the meshes from bridge and just start adding them here the other one is this one called spline wall align this one you'll see if you load up the quarry one actually we can put it here it's almost the same as the spline it just has uh, different kind of controls because as its name says it's kind of used to create the wall so once you have your assets if you're in a game this would be your assets that you use to kind of like make the player not go there uh, this will be really cool instead of doing invisible walls which I always hate in video games um, or if you just need like big structures to go along create kind of like a wall this will also 
be good for that. So let's add a static mesh. As you can see, it's not like the other ones where you just had a bunch of static meshes. You just had the one. Let's look for uh, one of those big meshes. I think uh, this one will do. So I'm just going to throw it in here. Or let me just do one that's more square-ish. There you go. All right, so we got that. And we have the mesh alignment. So where do you want the mesh align? Uh, you have your scale control, you have the roll. So as you can see, if I stretch the path, they start appearing. You can also change the way that they are placed, uh, which I think it's uh, it can be really funny. You just choose all the other axes. I don't know what's going on right now, but I'm just going to leave it in the X. You also have a uh, roll. You want them to be positioned in a specific way. And you also have your offset control. So your offset control is how close or separated are they from one another. So as you can see, if you want to make a continuous wall, this will be uh, the way to go about it. And we have m the same uh, scale randomness. So I'm going to type four. So you can see, uh, again, this is a little bit ridiculous because they are so different. But you can see that so-called randomness of the scale. Uh, you have one this size and one this size because it's from 0 0.9 to 4. So I'm just going to uh, leave that where it was. But just like the other one, you can just use this one and create a path to make a wall so i'm just going to let me see i'm just going to bring this one around here and i'm going to take out another point and you can see how i'm actually i think it's even deforming the mesh a little bit so it looks like it's deforming the mesh and and again it's something that you can use to create a wall i think it's creating a cool effect by kind of merging two of the same asset now, the last one we have here is this succulent green. This is actually a very simplistic blueprint, but I think it's really cool. It adds these uh, little plants called succulents. And you can see them right here. Uh, they don't have much controls to them. It's just a blueprint composed of several other meshes, but you can use it to uh, give some life to your environment. So you can uh, maybe put them right here on some of your rocks so it will look nice or something like that. So as you can see, very simple blueprints, but I think they can help a lot whenever you're making a level, especially if you're trying to uh, scatter assets or make asset construction a lot faster. I think it can really help out with that. Now, I know what you're all saying. You're probably wondering it ever since I started this video, can this work inside of Unreal Engine 5? And the answer is, well, yes, you can. These are blueprints. There's no reason for them not to work here. And one of the things that I'm seeing is that when I imported my map from over there, it does look a lot better, but uh, apparently it got rid of my displacement. Seems that's something we're going to talk about in a coming video. But as you can see, all of these work very well and everything else is functioning. All my splines are working as intended. So yeah, you can use them in Unreal Engine 5 and you can use these packs in Unreal Engine 5. The way you're going to get them here is by migrating your assets from one project to another. Uh, these projects will not go into the Unreal Engine Early Access right now, but you can just migrate them from your project and it should be fine. All right, that is it for this video. Please uh, leave me a comment, leave me a like, that really helps out the channel. Remember, there's a Patreon, there's a Twitter, there's a Discord, which just got a revamp. It looks much better now, and I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy your time over there right now. Uh, also, let me know which other Unreal Engine 5 things you want me to showcase. I know I need to look into the displacement thing, but uh, let me know which other things you'd like to see. And I'll see you in the next video.